Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest trends, stories, and innovations from the leaders in digital infrastructure. We are also coming to you live, that's right, live, Ryan, we're live, from the Lone Star State of Austin, Texas, for Data Cloud USA. And one of my very, very favorite things about coming live um, at, at the, some of these events is eavesdropping on other people's conversations. And I just did that, and that's how I met Ryan. So Ryan is an account executive with Qflow, and words that I heard Ryan say from across the room were things like supply chain and carbon management. Um, that's right. Excellent. So anyway, I'm going to let Ryan tell you a little bit more about Qflow, and then Ryan, I've got some questions for you. Okay, sounds great. All right, Qflow. Uh, so Qflow is essentially a tool to track supply chain carbon emissions. Uh, we It's a simple photograph from the site team. They just take a photo of the bill of ladings, and our system automatically calculates embodied carbon of the materials, the transport emissions associated with delivering those materials, and gives the uh, uh, the client an as-built digital record of all the material deliveries over the life of a project. That's what I thought I heard you say <laughs> across the room. But at any rate, it is um, it is highly relevant, I, I assume, to multiple industries. But it couldn't be any more relevant to the digital infrastructure industry than it is. We talk about greener data. We talk about all of these uh, sustainability and uh, renewable energy type initiatives within the industry. And And Ryan here is actually helping to meet some of those some of those sustainability uh, initiatives and some of those requirements. So um, Ryan, question number one, um, where is it exactly that you feel that you fit in the digital in in infrastructure space? Because we, we did met, you did mention supply chain and mm. logistics. How exactly does that plug into digital infrastructure? Well, I think with digital infrastructure, there's more of a push than ever to provide information on the ESG impacts during construction of these facilities. Okay, yeah. So these, uh, the owners and the developers of these data centers mm -hmm. are incentivized to provide uh, detailed data on you know, the, the carbon associated with the production of their materials, their transport emissions, and how they can reduce these um, emissions to essentially provide um, you know, a reduced footprint of their building during construction. So we're seeing these owners, you know, really prioritize this accurate data in order to, you know, present this to their for their ESG impacts and to their boards and to their clients as well. Yeah, see, I love I love that. So it is it's really a part of all of the upfront planning as much as it is for as it is to like we've already built everything. Mm. It's it's getting in there at the very very beginning and saying this is this this is a so the sustainability impact perhaps of the of the construction that you have going on um, as part of the planning, sometimes as part of uh, uh, obtaining finance and things like that too as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it, it really helps when the building is complete to have a full record of all the materials, the as-built materials that were used during the construction of the facility. So they know exactly which materials can be uh, recycled, repurposed down the road, and to really have a full encompassing digital record of that physical asset once it's built. Yeah, Ryan, I, I honestly foresee uh, this being kind of part and parcel to any next generation or future forward uh, digital infrastructure construction. Mm, I can see this becoming more of a requirement. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the reason you know why we're here is we find that the data center industry is a big driver and is a, there's a big push due yeah. to the things like the iMason's cli uh, Climate Accord. Near, the, near to our hearts. Yeah, 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 absolutely. The Amazon Climate Pledge. These initiatives are really driving companies to be greener during their building and to have a, a you know a more of a record of what materials are used in their buildings. Awesome. Okay, Ryan, last question. Mm -hmm. Now, when I saw you from across the room, I'm like, that looks like a young dude. Uh, and, and it is people like Ryan who are ultimately going to help um, folks like myself who have been in the industry a while kind of bring those dreams, bring those new initiatives forward. So tell me, is uh, what brought you to this industry and what might you say to another 30 something mm. um, who might be interested in kind of digital infrastructure and, and technology. Well, I've been in the construction industry for most of my life. Uh, my dad owns an insulation company uh, here in Texas, actually. And uh, I moved into the construction technology space and specifically Qflow 
and because I see this as the way forward. Um, companies are looking for a way to build greener, build more sustainable, and it's only going to grow, you know, as there's only a finite number of resources available. And so any way that we can reduce the impact during construction, construction and move towards a more circular economy is only going to help this industry grow moving forward. Okay, you are now the poster child <laughs> for, for the next gen workforce. Ryan, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you it. so much. I appreciate it. You bet. And thank you, viewers, for watching. Watching JSA TV. Happy networking.